Okay, <clears throat> now let's discuss this compare to method. As you know, um, the interface comparable has only one method that is compared to, and that method will return an int. If the int is zero, that means the two objects are equal, are the same. If that returned int is negative, that means the first object is less than the second one. If it's positive, the first one is greater than the second one. Okay, so if you want to um, uh, implement that method, you will implement that interface, right? So implements uh, comparable, that is the interface, okay? And when you do that, I also, I already have this here, but it still doesn't allow you to compile. So if you look at this, you don't quite understand this yet. And this will be fully explained in class three in uh, Programming Fundamentals 3, which is 2436. But I will just put it here. It's basically saying when you are comparing two things, you cannot compare oranges and apples together. If you are comparing a person, you must make sure you dictate what is being compared, what is it being compared to. So I'm saying this person will be compared with a person. So this dictates so that the comparison is meaningful and logical. Okay, so once we do that, we have to implement the compare to method. See, if you don't, it will say you have to implement the compare to method, right? So um, that's why um, you have to. So here is the compare to method I have. Let me explain it, okay? So it returns an int and the compare to, that's the method name, you cannot change that. That is uh, defined already. And we are comparing the current object, the executing object with the person, which is P, I named it P. <clears throat> so if you look at a person, it has two instance variables. One is the name, one is the age. You as the system designer, as the class designer, you decide what is important what qualifies as something that defines this person, right? Different or not different. So in this case, there are these two instance variables. Of course, name and age define this person. And we can decide, okay, if they have the same name and the same age, then the two people are the same. If they have the same name, don't have the same age, they are not the same. If they don't have the same name at all, we don't even have to talk about age. They are not the same people. So based on that logic, we will first compare the name and see if the name are the same. If the name are not the same, then we know comparing name is enough. We know if they are not the same people. Okay, so if the names are the same, then we need to compare the age. Let's see how we compare the name. Okay, so this name is the executing object, is the current object, right? This name dot compare to, we can use compare to here because name is a string and the string class has already implemented comparable. That's why you can call this method, okay? <clears throat> so name dot compare to P, which is this, parameter value, parameter object, right, right here, p dot get name. So we get the name from the other person and compare that name with the current executing object. If the comparison returns a zero, that means the two names are the same. Remember once again, compare two. If they are the same, it returns zero. If one is less than the second one, it returns negative. One is greater than the second one, it returns positive. So if the name comparison returns zero, then we know they are the same. They have the same name. Well, that's not enough for a person, right? Just the same name, not enough. We need to compare their ages. So if that's the case, we need to compare their ages. The current age and the person's age. 
uh, this P once again is this P, right? This person here. So this P's age and this current age, you compare them. If they are equal, we know the name are e the names are equal, the ages are equal. Then we return zero. That means these two people are the same. If the current object's age is less than the compared to person's age, this person's age, then we return negative one. Else, that means age is greater than this person's age, we return positive one, okay? So if the name and the other person's name are not the same, that's the else, right? If they are not the same, what do we do? We don't even have to think about the age. We just need to do a comparison of the age. Uh, no, I'm sorry, of the name. So name.compare to p.getName will, will give you zero, negative, or positive, right? So <clears throat> that is when they are not the same, you compare the name. If the names are the same, you further compare the age. That is the um, compare to method. So now let's come to this. Uh, I'm going to comment this out, okay? So we have two new students. We have two, uh, this new student and this student too. So this student's name is Carl. This is Sabrina. Of course, Carl will come first. So we should see student one comes before student two, right? When their names are not the same, we don't even think about the age. Let me, let's just put age there. Okay, but the age doesn't matter because the names are not the same. That's the very first comparison. So student one comes from student, before student two, right? Student one is less than student two. And if their ages are not the same, and it's still the same result because we are only comparing the names because the names are different. Okay, so now how about I change this name here? Okay, Carl, and this is 23, this is um, 16, and also notice that we are not even comparing the major. The majors are not com compared at all. We deem them not important in this project. They are, but in this project, uh, we are not thinking it's important. Okay, so now, uh, student one comes after student two. That means student two is less than student one. Why? Because student two's age is 16. Student one's age is 23. So they have the same name. Now we begin to compare the age. So in this case, S1 is the current or executing object. S2 is the compare to. Once again, if you come here, okay, this would be S1's name and S1's age. This would be S2, right? That's S2, that person P is S2. Okay, we discussed that in the previous um, video already. So you understand that, right? Um, well, what if they have the same name? Let's see, 23, that, then it should say student one is the same as student two. So student one is the same as student two. So the thing here is we are not comparing the two students, actually. We are comparing the two persons. That's why this major did not make any difference because person implemented this method. So when you actually do these comparisons, it goes to student, but it didn't find that compare to method, right? There is no compare to. So where does it go? It goes to person and finds this method. And so it uses this method. And this method only compares name and age. It doesn't compare major because this is a person. It doesn't even have a major. And so here, uh, that's that. Another thing, uh, now let's look at janitor, okay? I implemented the compare to method for janitor. Here, we don't even have to say implement. Um, implements compare, uh, comparable because we extend person and person implemented uh, comparable. So by definition, janitor also implements comparable. But if you do not implement it, 
you still compile like student because your parent has implemented that method. So, uh, but for janitor, um, I implemented this method. So now janitor has its own specific version. So for janitor, what does janitor uh, have as attributes? Name, age, and the hourly wage. So three attributes. So how do we compare, right? We compare with a janitor, of course, because this is a janitor class. So you compare a janitor with a janitor. And we already know in person, we have this compare to method already. So we can utilize that. And to do that, we use the super keyword. Super references person, you remember. So super dot compare to. So here we are calling the compare to method of person. Okay, we are calling this method. So we use the super keyword dot compare to, and J is the current parameter, the janitor. If that comparison, so here we are only comparing the name and age, okay, because we are calling the parents compare, compare to method. So it's only comparing the name and age. And if that returns zero, that means they have the same name and the same age. Then to make this janitor comparison, we need to further compare the hourly wage. So when they are, have the same name and same age, we go one step further to compare hourly wage, the current object's hourly wage and j.get hourly wage. If they are the same, we return zero. That means they have the same name, same age, and same hourly wage. Else, <clears throat> if hourly wage is less than this object's hourly wage, then we return negative one. Else, return positive one. Else, and this else is paired with this if, right? Else, that means they are not the same. That means they don't have the same name and the same age. So if they don't have the same name and same age, then they are not the same person. So we don't even have to compare the hourly wage. We just compare those two persons and return the result. And so you call super.compareTo. This only compares the name and age, okay? Uh, you return that result. So that's how this compare to is implemented. And now let's go to the driver and I'm going to unleash this. Oops, why? Okay, uh, so I have to do it one by one then. Okay, let's see if J1, so J1 has what? Has uh, bill, bill, 34, 34, but different hourly wage. So based on this, they have the same name, same uh, age, but differently hourly age, different hourly age, a wage. So based on this, <clears throat> we should say J2 comes before J1, or J1 comes after J2, right? That means J1 is greater than J2, okay? J1 is greater at 0 0.45, 0 0.45 dollar, okay, 45 cents. So let's see. J1 comes after J2, right? So that's correct. Um, well, that's when they have the same name and the same age. Now let's see if we give them the same, um, we give them the same hourly wage and different name, then in this case, we should say janitor two comes after janitor one or janitor one, uh, no, janitor two comes before, right? Janitor one comes after janitor two, which means janitor two comes before janitor one because bill comes before will, okay. And uh, so that's the, the other scenario would be different age, right? This is uh, child labor, this is illegal, but okay, let's see. 
genital one comes after genital two. That means genital two is before, comes before, okay? So genital two's age is so young, so, oh no, it doesn't matter even with the age. Oh, what, what I meant is have the same name, okay? Let's do the same name. And just now, Bill and Will, of course, J2 comes before J1. Now let's see, J2 still should come before J1 because their ages are different. So genital one comes after genital two. So gen J2 comes before J1, and that's correct. So you, you use different scenarios to test the result. And if they are logical, that means your implementation is correct. Okay, this person's implementation, and in genital, we use the super keyword to um, combine that with the hourly wage comparison to get the result. Okay, um, so when you compare, and when you do this, this is basically saying S1 is less than S2, right? And this is saying less S1 is greater than S2. Um, so just understand that. Don't get boggled down by this syntax because this one, right? This comparison, uh, this comparison will give you an int. Compare to returns an int. So you compare that int with zero. Okay, um, that's it, everybody.